If there's one major thing that shines the most for me and gets me the most excited in Destiny 2, it has to be the build crafting. Going back all the way to the days of my Pokemon VGC days, build crafting has always been something I really truly enjoyed because it brought out the best in my creativity and pushed me to my limits to where I had to think outside the box and perhaps even at times go out of my comfort zone to make things work. So in this video, we're going to talk specifically about a build that I just came up with recently, focusing around my all-time favorite exotic in the game, Moth Keepers. So, that being said, if you want to see more build content, educational content, and just overall Destiny 2 content, and much more, then be sure as always to like, comment, and subscribe. And let's get straight into the video. So before we jump into the nitty gritty details of the build at its core, we need to first look at the beginning. That is the blueprint. How did it all begin? Well, everything starts here with the Moth Keeper's Wraps, which of course, as I mentioned earlier, is my favorite exotic in the game and for good reason. Winged Eclipse, Winged Eclipse sorry, the armor perk states that your grenade becomes a cage of loyal moths that release on impact and fly toward the nearest target or ally if they reach a target they detonate in a blinding explosion. If they reach an ally, the moths grant your ally a void overshield. Now, the beauty about this is, of course, A, it blinds targets, which to me, I feel blinding is a really, really strong and active offensive perk, but it can also be defensive as well to keep yourself alive. But more importantly, the void overshield makes this build that much more satisfying because you now have that defensive option where... If you are taking damage, you can use the Moth Keeper on yourself and thus have an overshield to keep you alive and sustain. So we won't go too heavily into the armor mod just yet. I'll go into that in another section. But right now, I want to just talk about the actual build again at its core. So the MVP outside of the Moth Keeper's wraps is Tessellation. And Tessellation is, to me, a pretty underutilized weapon at the moment. Personally, for me, I haven't, I've heard some mixed bags about this weapon and in my admitted, you know, approach, I did not really have much to expect from the weapon, but as I started to use it more, I recognized something really, really impactful about it. And we'll talk about that really soon, but the MVP as far as weapon is the Tessellation. And the great thing about this build is that there are a lot of things you can really optimize and, and really just take advantage of. You know, there's, there's a lot of flexibility, but there's also a lot of complexity, which this gives you a chance to go on your own path of mastery towards really understanding the build long term. So let's go into the prismatic section. This is where, you know, we start to kind of dive a little deeper here, but not too deep. But as you can see, I'm running with snare bomb, grapple, which of course will not really work here because in Moth Keepers wraps, one of the things that Moth Keepers will do is it will override your respective grapple slot because it already has a built-in grenade into its gauntlet perk. You have two. So you actually have two grenades that you have at your disposal for both offensive and defensive capabilities. And with Snare Bomb, this to me, it's a void melee, but it acts as a third grenade option, which also weakens enemies as you attack them. So there is some degree of, again, offense and defense, depending on how you want to utilize it. Then going into our aspects, we have the Thousand Executioner, as well as the new subclass arc aspect ascension here, which states that press while airborne, Consume your class ability energy to summon your arc staff, propelling yourself upward and creating a burst of energy around you that amplifies allies and jolts targets. Now, the reason why I chose this, not only is it because I love arc, but more importantly, the amplify. Amplify to me, I think, is a wonderful, wonderful arc to have uh, because it's, it's something that provides you with mobility. And mobility is something that really helps you to either stay alive or push for the advantage. And when you pair that with the likes of Executioner or Styles Executioner, where defeating a target affected by any debuff 
grants invisibility and true sight. And after you perform execution, your next melee attack while invisible weakens targets. So that this pairs well into snare bomb. But more importantly, this this allows you to play a more hit and run approach where you can hit targets for big damage. And if they hit you, you can run away because you're amplified and because you're invisible, they can't see you. So you can use this as a, as a means to reposition, go to high ground and then rinse and repeat for more damage. And then we have our fragments here, which of course we have facet of protection, which states that while surrounded by combatants, you are more resistant to incoming damage. While transcendent, this effect is increased. So this, of course, is a really, really strong prismatic fragment and personally is what adds more to this build overall because it pairs well with just everything as far as the aspects. You're invisible, you have mobility, but now you also have something to keep you more grounded, more, again, strong in the in the defensive area where admittedly arc tends to struggle but prismatic really does help to magnify that defensive aspect even more and furthermore if we jump to the hunter's journal the new artifact this season we have what is known as galvanic armor which states that while you have an arc or prismatic subclass equipped incoming damage from combatants is reduced while amplified so this in itself plays extremely well into the whole defensive capability of this build. And of course, when you tie that with fast protection, you can clearly see why this build is really, really strong in that area. Next, we have Facet of Ruin, which states that it increases the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a stasis crystal or frozen target and increases the area of effect of solar ignitions. So this in particular here is mainly used for my super. It's mainly used for when I, you know, shatter targets or freeze targets with my with my weapons, most notably with either my stasis weapons. And this is just really good because giving you that additional size, that AOE kind of burst really helps to deal with adds a lot more effectively. Next, we have Facet of Hope. While you have an elemental buff, your class ability regens more quickly. So this allows for me to basically just spam my class ability always having my ascension ready to amplify myself and jolt targets and more importantly this allows for me to really go into the whole snare bomb rinse and repeat making sure to weaken targets as i go because we are using gambler's dodge which recharges your melee ability right away so that alongside facet of hope really allows for me to just funnel more and more snare bombs weakening targets blinding targets and then finishing them all off with the likes of silence and squall or just other stasis options that i have at my disposal and next we have facet of courage which states that your solar arc and void abilities deal increased damage to targets afflicted with darkness debuffs and so we already have the likes of breeze slash slow through our facet of ruin which we'll go into in detail afterwards with regards to weapons but basically we'll be utilizing a lot of stasis weapons so things like age receptor or just any sort of stasis weapon hand cannon lfr right now i'm using the fire uh, fire and forget linear fusion rifle which has been really consistent as far as damage but also doing what it needs to do to create that aoe burst and thus clear adds on the fly so this is really good because again it increases the damage with darkness debuffs applied so things like our snare bomb will have more value for that reason and then lastly we have facet of purpose where picking up an orb of power grants either amplified restoration frost armor woven mail or overshield based on the damage type of your equipped super so this in itself ties into once again the defensive approach of the build where now i'm applying frost armor due to me running with the silence and squall super so not only will i have frost armor and it's very easy for me to obtain orbs of power which we'll get into again in detail with regards to our armor mods but this gives me frost armor and you tie that in with the legs of again executioner ascension making me very fast very unkillable in that sense unseeable right undetectable rather and then of course we have the passive protection you pair all those together and you have a build that really is sustainable and versatile so that being said 
let's jump into the weapons and what makes this class or at least this prismatic hunter so durable I mentioned earlier in the video about why I love Tessellation and why it's the MVP of this particular build, and it isn't for the reason that you think. Now, at its core, Tessellation is a fusion rifle. So initially you're thinking, okay, well, I should use it as a fusion rifle states where you want to be charging it, aim for a specific part of the body, get some damage. And that's what I thought too. I jumped in, I used the rifle as it was intended to, only to see the numbers not really kind of provide anything noteworthy and so i thought okay well let me just go into what its perk state and we'll start with the intrinsic property undecidable this weapon instrument topology adapts its damage type to match your equipped grenade final blows grant grenade energy and you tie that into its trait or rather weapon perk property irreducible Consume your grenade to load a large projectile shape language that generates an elemental explosion on impact. Now, I wasn't, again, coming into this expecting this fusion rifle to be a grenade launcher, <laughs> but that's really what it is, at least from my testing and experience thus far. This is really a fusion grenade launcher. And when you really combine its traits with the perk, this thing does insane damage. I was surprised to see numbers going close to the 200,000 mark on just one grenade shot alone when you pair that with other parts of my kit where you can weaken targets and thus you're doing more damage to them. Again, we'll go into that later as far as armor mods and whatnot, but Tessellation at its core is really a fusion grenade launcher. And when you pair that with the likes of Moth Keepers that gives you by default two grenades out of the gate, you can already see why it's really valuable. Pair that with your Transcendence. Once you pop Transcendence, you get free grenades as well because you have a span of time, right? When you're in Transcendent, where you can utilize those grenades and it doesn't eat up your Moth Keeper grenade. It just takes and eats the Transcendence grenade, which is cool. So not only do you have two Moth Keeper grenades, you have a quite, a quite a sizable amount to eat up and blow up targets on the fly. So the MVP for sure is Tessellation, and I'll show some gameplay on screen to kind of give you more uh, of, a, of a visual as to why it's really powerful. I'm, I think you saw earlier in the video where you know one shot of Tessellation took off a huge chunk of an ogre's health, almost one-shotting it almost. So this thing is fantastic. But in, in the grand scheme of things, you're looking for weapons in this particular build that cater to arc and stasis now you're more than happy to run things like strand if you want to go for the additional you know thread links with hatchling or you want to slice targets to further reduce you know outgoing damage from the enemy those options are very much there and admittedly depending on the actual content i will sometimes opt for the call it's my what is my favorite sidearm right now as far as the new weapons that have been released it's very very good i recommend getting it i'll make a video on this very soon also you have the likes of izanagi you have final warning but again stasis is where you really want you want to focus your attention on so wicked implement is great arvin deal is great the new hand cannon bolt endings is fantastic age receptor is amazing the new grenade launcher lost signal is incredible and if you really wanted to go double grenade launcher in this case you technically could so lost signal being the new area denial frame which states that each project each projectile creates a lingering pool of impact that deals damage over time so this is like the wither horde but a stasis version but more so it's like three mini wither hordes on the floor and with radio laurea transposer rapid final blows cause targets to explode into a pool of radio larian fluid so this you tie that into the likes of tessellation you tie that into the whole moth keepers build you're just blinding things and then of course when you have your ascension applied you are jolting targets in the sky you are going invisible you're just doing a plethora of different things all at once everything is shocked blinded frozen dead you know so it's it's really really cool how it all comes together but those are some suggestions i recommend as far as kinetic options in that slot 
As I said, the MVP here is Tessellation, but you're more than welcome to run things like Still Hunt if you really want it for more single target sustain. But I will say, admittedly, Tessellation is so great because it's not only great for ad clearing, it is also good for single target damage because of how much damage output it has when you pair it well with the likes of a snare bomb, weakening targets. It just does so much. And then in the final slot, you can go with, again, Stasis, Fire and Forget is my favorite right now. But you have also Hullabaloo, you have Ill Omen, which is the new sword, you have Crux, you have Queen Breaker, which received a buff recently. You have you know, Whisper if you want more, again, sustained damage for single target. But you have a plethora of other stasis options that you can use, arc options you can use. Just think about that in particular and try to really amplify your damage in that regard. So that being said, we're going to jump into the more nitty gritty stuff now, which of course will be like numbers as far as armor mods we won't go into damage specifics i think i'll say that for another video because i still need more time to cook with this build this is mainly just an overview of what the build can offer but as far as damage specifics and numbers we'll look for we'll look forward to a part two all right so that being said let's jump into the last segment I just want to say thank you all for coming this far in the video. I really do appreciate it. This is a series I've always wanted to build upon, no pun intended, for a while now. Thus, the name, you know, New Builds. I really love build crafting. It's the very thing that I wake up to every single day. And it's like my Christmas gift in Destiny 2, where I just sit on the screen and I'm just brainstorming and conjuring up different things that I can utilize for my favorite you know from my favorite exotic pieces and just weapon loadouts that complement all that so that being said again thank you again so as far as this build this is all about grenades and getting the max value so the main focus here is discipline i want to make sure this is at 100 and that way your uptime of grenades is always there therefore you can spam things like your blinding grenades with moth keepers and that way you can also get your void over shields with the moth keepers as well but more importantly you can feed that into your tessellation which then gives you a chance to just deal aoe damage but also single target damage as well and tie that in with everything else which we'll get into right now is really impactful so we'll start off with the hunter's journal and then we're going to move into the actual mods themselves so the hunter's journal what am i running right now currently i have the unstoppable sidearm overload hand cannon and anti-barrier submachine gun and then we also have overcharge armory which states that weapons with the dealer's choice radio laria transposer collective purpose and sundering origin traits are always overcharged weapons for you when that modifier is active so I have this activated in the event that I run with something like, let's say, the Call or just any of the new Dealer's Choice weapons. The Radiolara Transposer, for example, is a good option for Lost Signal, and that will always be overcharged. Sundering works well with Indebted Kindness, another ARC option. Then I have the Authorized Mod, which is great here. The energy costs of Elemental Charge mods are significantly discounted, so typically there are three three cost and it costs you one so therefore that gives you added value and flexibility to really play around with different mods to work to your liking next i have elemental siphon which wrap which, which is rapid final blows with a kinetic weapon or a weapon matching your equip super creates an elemental pickup that matches your equip super in our case here since we have the silence and squall which is stasis we're going to be picking up those stasis shards which again will be very very nice then we have creeping chill which is stasis weapon final blows against slowed or frozen targets released a burst that slows so this in itself is also fantastic this plays well into the facet of ruin as i mentioned earlier where you have like a greater burst slash damage effect which is perfect then if i'm running let's say the call this would be another active perk that i can use where destroying a tangle with a strand weapon creates a larger and more damaging explosion then i have radiant orbs which is cool because every time i pick up an orb of power i get radiant which then plays into the whole damage output being amplified with the likes of tessellation then you have galvanic armor which once you're amplified 
this reduces incoming damage from combatants. And then I haven't gotten these two yet, but what I will be working on will be Shield Crush, where it states that while you have Woven Mail, Frost Armor, or Avoid Overshield, your melee recharges faster and deals increased damage. And while you are Amplified or Radiant, your grenade recharges faster and deals increased damage. So once this is activated for me, this is going to really take the, 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 the actual build to the next level as far as damage and just overall consistent utility. And then lastly, I'll be using Transference 2, where it says gain, increase grenade and melee damage while transcendent, weapon final blows while transcendent, refund light and dark energy after transcendence ends. So when you tie this all in with the Moth Keepers build, these two here are going to really just solidify and really create the, the explosive impact that the build wants. And so now we can move into the actual mods themselves, kicking things off with the helmet. So the helmet here, I'm running with special ammo finder. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to make sure that my tessellation has the ammo resources needed to ensure I can always spam those grenades and get that nice big chunk of damage for ad clearing and also single targets. Then the arc siphon, every time I use tessellation, you get the over power, which is fantastic. Any more orbs, that gives me the frost armor, and that means I can survive for much longer. And ultimate's radiant. So, so long as I'm picking up orbs, I'm radiant, I get frost armor, that's just a great pairing. Next, for the moth keeper section, for the gauntlets, I'm running with firepower, which gives me grenade final, well, sorry, gives, gives me more orbs of power for grenade final blows, heavy handed. Also, Powered Melee Final Blows give me Orbs of Power, and then I'm also running Bolstering Detonation, which grants me Class Ability Energy when I cause damage with the grenade. So this all ties together as well, because we want to be spamming that Class Ability Energy to get that Ascension, right? You want to be able to amplify yourself and thus reduce the damage you take, but also Jolting Targets. We can also just use Class Ability on the floor, you know, therefore you can reset your snare bomb right so you just dodge snare bomb dodge snare bomb constantly weaken targets and just do more damage over time then next we have the chest piece where i'm running with concussive dampener which just further reduces the amount of damage i take aoe damage from combatants and then i have arc reserves so i just want to make sure that my tessellation has enough ammunition to really utilize just because i'm using it so frequently i want to make sure that i'm always cooking those grenades and just spamming them so therefore ads can just be erased and bosses can just eat a nice big chunk of damage and then next for the leg armor we're running with arc weapon surge and as i mentioned earlier with the elemental charge it used to be three and now it is one and this states that collecting a fire sprite Ionic Trace, Stasis Shard, or Void Breach, or Destroying a Strand Tangle has an escalating chance to give you Armor Charge, which of course can also tie into other things. But more importantly, just having this available is nice because it gives you some flexibility to really gain free Armor Charge, and thus you can activate other specific perks. Then I have Stasis Weapon Surge, so these are mostly just to give my weapons more damage output. You know, that's always a, pl uh, always a plus in this case and then we have the cloak and the cloak i'm running with reaper which gives me orbs of power shortly after using my class ability the next weapon final blow gives me those and then we have distribution which reduces all ability cooldowns when using my class ability and then lastly bomber reduces my grenade cooldown when using my class ability so you can see the whole game loop here where it's class ability spam get my grenade cooldown back and that just ties into more damage damage reduction and that in itself is always a positive so i will switch from time to time because of course i have armor charge so i want to be using it so there will be a case where i will use things like special finisher where i want to just be able to finish off a target and also give myself more special ammo bricks which is fantastic for this build but that's if I'm running with something like double special. If I'm not running double special, I'll just keep bomber on. But if I'm running double special, I want to make sure I uh, have this activated so therefore we can really get the most value. And so that about covers everything as a whole. And I do hope that this has given you uh, a fresh look at what 
my build crafting is all about and more specifically why this build is really fun explosive and just strong overall long term now of course i'm going to be doing more damage testing in this uh, in this particular build so look forward to a part two but all in all i love this build a lot it's really really fun exciting it gives me a lot of versatility it's complex because there's a lot of different gears and different functions you have to really pay attention to like cooldowns for your grenades and making sure that you're always amplified with your ascension so there's a lot of different different you know things to tinker with but ultimately it really is a build that i feel will shine long term so long as you're able to maximize your game loop so thank you all for tuning in once again this is the new builds series and look forward to more new builds in the future as always new warriors stay strong keep fighting and may the force be with you all, always. Alrighty, take care, and see you again soon. Peace.